Okay, in First John chapter three, in verse eleven, the apostle John says, "For this is the message you've heard from the beginning that you should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, which is the devil. He was of the devil, and he slew his brother." And wherefore slew he him? Why did he slay his brother? Because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Marvel not that the world hates you. What was Cain's deepest sin? So many people believe that Cain's deepest sin was murder, that he murdered his brother. But this verse says the reason he murdered his brother is because his works were evil. His works were were evil. Cain believed that what he was doing was right. Cain believed with all of his heart that when he gave that, that um, salad to the Lord, when he offered up vegetables to God, the work of his own hands, he believed with all of his heart that it was the best thing he could possibly give. Probably he believed it was better than what Abel gave, which was a lamb. He believed it with all of his heart, and when God rejected him, he became angry. He became angry when God said, Cain, I reject what you did. I'm not interested in your works. Your works are evil. And the scripture says that his works came from the devil, came from the wicked one. The wicked one. What is the characteristic of the wicked one? But it is self-righteousness. And now we're getting to the root of the, the real root of the problem. Self-righteousness, when... I believe myself to be right. Um, go with me to Romans chapter 10. Cain was self-righteous. He became angry because he believed himself. He believed that what he was judging was correct. In Romans chapter 10, we see this about the Jews. Now, when you think of the main emotion that people had concerning Jesus... His enemies, what was the greatest emotion that they had against Jesus Christ? It was anger. I don't know why. A man heals people and the religious men, self-righteous men, become angry at him. So angry that they want to kill him. And they sought to kill him over and over and over again. It is anger. That the crowd screaming, crucify him, crucify him. Where did all the anger come from? It came from self-righteousness. It came from this man, this man. Who does he think he is? Who does he think he is healing people? Who does he think he is telling us that we are wrong? Telling us, quoting Bible verses. He thinks he's so great. They hated him. And we see in Romans chapter 10, the foundation of it. Verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for Israel, that they might be saved. We, look, we do love Israel. But verse 2, For I bear them record that they have zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, they're ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. It's kind of a, it's a loaded little portion of scripture, but it tells us that God has a righteousness and that man has a righteousness. If man, you know, when Adam, in, in Revelation 3.22, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in eternity, in eternity past, and in that time as they were considering the garden, they, they saw what happened and they said about Adam, look, he has become as us, knowing good and evil. The thing that happened to us when we fell, the thing that troubles us over and over again in our psychology, the reason that men study psychology is, is to try to fix us. Our problem is that we know good and evil, or we think we do. We are constantly saying, that's good, that's bad, that's good, that's bad, that's good, that's, that's right, that's wrong, that's good, that's evil. It's bad, I hate it, it's good, I love it. Oh, he's good, I love him, she's bad, I hate her. 
This, this is like our, our problem. It happened in, in 6,000 years ago, 6,000 plus years ago, when Adam actually fell. And he became one who knew good and evil. Knowing good and evil is how we establish our own righteousness. And I, I hope this isn't too, uh, too um, abstract for us. But Cain slew his brother because he judged himself to be right. You know why marriages break up? Marriages break up because the husband judges himself to be right. And he has all kinds of proof. She did that, and she did that, and she did that, and she did that. And when I counsel marriages, the first thing that the spouse does is give me the shopping list of what their husband did. And that's supposed to prove that he's bad. And if I can prove that he's bad, then maybe Pastor Brian will agree with me that he should be kicked out of the house. Or that he, something should happen. Maybe even that I should divorce him. But do you see the trouble with that? When both the husband and the wife have their own shopping list of what the other person has done and why they are bad? Based on who? Whose judgment is right and wrong? And the scripture says, neither of their judgments is right. Only God's judgment is right. In John 7, 24, Jesus said that we should judge righteous judgments, that we should judge judgments that are the judgments of God. The Jews didn't seek God's righteousness. They sought their own righteousness. And in their own world, Jesus should die. In their minds, this man is in competition with us. We know how that is as pastors. You know how many people go to that church and how many people go to that church. And, and you know, oh, that pastor, his doctrine's not right. And that pastor, his doctrine's not right. And people should come to my church. Or, you know, we get into that kind of relative righteousness. And God is not happy with any of it. And oh my gosh, look at that. That guy's church, people are leaving his church. That's a good thing. This is. I know, you know, I saw it the way he treats his cat or something. He's a bad guy. And we could rejoice in it. And God is not at all pleased with it. So Cain slew his brother because he was self righteous. He slew his brother because he wasn't interested in what God wanted. What did God accept? And when you remember the story in, in Genesis 4. Cain was angry. He was ready to go kill his brother. He was so upset. And God came to him and said, Cain, what is the problem? Do what is acceptable. Offer the lamb. Just do what is acceptable. What is the problem? And Cain and the Lord said that sin is crouching at your door. And if you do not do what is acceptable, sin will pounce on you. And that's what happened. He didn't give way to the wrath. He said, what? Gee, God, what do you want? And God would say, I want the lamb, who is a picture of Jesus Christ. I want the lamb. That's what I want. Give the lamb and let the anger go by, but he couldn't do it. He said, no, I gave what is good. I gave the work of my own hands. I will not, I will not give a lamb. I hate my brother. He thinks he's so great. He thinks he's so good. He's all this competition and comparison that happens when we are self-righteous. And so the bus hit him, and he went out and he slew his brother. But he didn't, the, the slaying of his brother wasn't the greatest sin. It was his self-righteousness, because self-righteousness comes from the wicked one. Jesus said in John 8, 44, he said, your father is the devil, and he was saying it to the Pharisees, your father is the devil, and he was a murderer from the beginning. It is in his nature to be a murderer. That's because of self-righteousness. Satan fell because of self-righteousness. Now, we know this verse very well. It's in Matthew 6, 33. But it does tell us something about life. And that is, what is what, whose righteousness am I seeking? Mine or God's? And if I would seek God's righteousness, what is God's righteousness? In Matthew 6, 33, it says, Seek first. Primarily, foremost, the kingdom of God and what? And his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. And all these things are what we worry about all the time. My food, my job, my money, my house, my car, 
Those are all the things that we worry about primarily. But the Lord says you're missing it. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness primarily first. And all those things will be added to you. That's not life. Life is whose righteousness are you living in? If you're living in your own righteousness, then you will have poor relationships everywhere on this planet. Because you will be judging everyone Good or evil, good or evil, and, and actually you will judge yourself also. You can be sure, if there is a critical person, a perfectionist, they are more of a perfectionist with themselves than they are with other people. If there is a person who is always angry, he is more angry with himself than he is with other people. Now, if we seek our own righteousness and we stay on the throne, and declare what is right and wrong, then we will have very poor relationships, which means the quality of our life will be poor. Even though I can have a mansion, I can have a Ferrari in my driveway, but my dog doesn't like me, my cat doesn't like me, my neighbors don't like me, my wife probably is having a problem with me, and my kids are probably running for cover when I come home. Because, because I'm a I'm a bad judge. So we think about um, God's righteousness, and we'll, we'll close with this thought. But Jonah, remember in Jonah, um, Jonah chapter 4, let me see if we can find that one the fastest. Jonah, so that I, Jonah. Okay, it's in that, that last flurry of, of minor prophets. Joel, Amos, Obadiah, and Jonah. Okay. This is what happened. Jonah, Jonah heard God's call to go preach, go preach to the Ninevites. The Ninevites were offering up children. They were slaying their own children in a, and putting them through the fire. The Ninevites were horrible, horrible people. And Jonah hated them. And his hatred was, was righteous. They were really bad. And he hated them. And God sent Jonah to go to Nineveh. And Jonah said, I'm not going. I don't want to go. And we find out in chapter 4 why he didn't want to go. But he said, I don't want to go. So he got on the ship going the other direction. You know how it went. He ended up getting tossed overboard. He spent a few days in the belly of a whale, which is scientifically very possible. And the whale burped him up onto the shore at Nineveh. So Jonah preached the gospel at Nineveh. And you can see in Jonah chapter 3, in verse 10, it says, God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them, and he did not do it. These horrible, horrible people repented. They, they received God. They received the Lord of the Old Testament, the, the, the Old Testament scriptures. They received the message, and God said, okay, I turned my anger from them. And Jonah was upset, really upset at God. And it says why in chapter 4. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. And he was very angry. And he prayed to God and said, I pray, Lord, that it was not this. I pray, Lord, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled there before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth of the evil. Therefore now, Lord, take, I beseech you, my life from me. It's better for me to die than to live. Then Jonah was saying, Lord, I, I knew you were going to do this. I knew if I, if I told these wicked people about you, I knew they would repent. And I knew you would be gracious to them. I knew you weren't going to crush them, but I want them crushed. I knew you were going to let them off the hook. And now he's angry. So the Lord asked him this question, and I could ask all of us the same question in verse 4. Then said the Lord, Doeth thou well to be angry? That's a great question. Is it right that you are angry? That I am merciful? And you are not merciful? Is that anger correct? That I forgive sin and you don't forgive sin? 